Well, welcome to the show. Today, I am excited to greet and welcome back a friend of mine, Christian. Welcome, Christian. Hi, it's great to be here. Fantastic. Uh, one of my favorite ways to spend my morning is talking to one of my favorite people on this little blue dot. Amen, brother. Well, so our topic today is we're both libertarian leaning, I, I think would be one way of saying it. There are a lot of different, you know, not capital L, uh, but there have been lots of ideas over the years that people who have have not wanted government solutions have says, well, it, it, they say, you know, it should be done this way or it should be done that way. But then nobody does it. So I, that's why I was so excited when I learned about this project that uh, that you're leading. Um, will you tell me a little bit? What's it, what's it called? Yeah, so the project's called Voluntary Virtue, and it's a little bit more than a project. It's actually a fully-fledged 501c3 nonprofit organization based in charitable actions and hardship relief. Uh, it's pretty incredible, actually, uh, how much it's come to fruition over these last, really, really just few months um, and how much progress has been made. That's wonderful. And I was honored that you guys asked me to kind of toss out some ideas and be involved. And, and I'm uh, on the board. So just for disclosure, uh, I, I know a little bit about this, but this interview is partially for me to learn more uh, because you are the CEO and I would like to learn more just uh, about the project in general. Um, and some questions I have. So you say hardship relief. Is this the type of thing that, is it a long term? Are you going to have a bunch of families that you're giving 5,000 bucks a month to for the rest of their lives, like social security, or uh, what, what does that look like? Uh, short term from an operational perspective, especially I see us doing more of the uh, effects of uh, immediate kind of hardship relief. So we talked a lot about it. whenever we came up with this idea, like all good ideas, it starts with a, a brainstorming session, right? right? How would this work in the real world? We have what we want, the vision, hardship relief, which is very vacuous, like you said, but um, in implementation, there's actually so many ways that it could be done that it's kind of, it's almost liberating in a sense, right? So I, I think the answer to your question is uh, no, not immediately, but there are no closed doors as long as it's done voluntarily and ethically. And, and that is the big difference is, is, as I see it and why I'm so excited to be involved is that much of, of what we hear about in terms of you know, social security or when uh, one of the government groups comes into where a place has flooded or something like that, the money, the, the donated money wasn't really donated. It was taken through taxation. And whether one is in favor of taxation or not, um, I, I think you don't really get any moral credit if people take money from you without your permission and then do good things with it. And that's kind of what I, I love about your it's a 501c3 or is going to be in the process? Yes. I, I love that it's it's all voluntary, which you know is part of the name. Um, and is this something that you're going to be accepting one-time donations or is there going to be a something that people can continuously donate? Can they earmark where they want the money to go? A lot of questions. Sorry about that. Yeah. So what we wanted to do was we wanted to allow as many people as possible to be involved in this process, right? So donations is one of the avenues by which you can engage yourself in charitable giving, right? Uh, and so we'll be allowing individual one-time donations of however amount a person sees fit, but we'll also be allowing monthly recurring payments for those who want to continue to contribute into the, the, the operations of the corporation into perpetuity if we if we do our job right. And um, it's something that I think really allows people to, to feel like they're a part of the team almost. Uh, and I know that's kind of a cliche thing to say, right. but you get to track your money as it goes through our system. You get to see the good things it's going to. And if you feel like that's worth a monthly con contribution or a one-time deal, we're more than happy to accept either one. Okay. And so the big inaugural event or the, or the first big event that's happening, will you tell me just a, a little bit about that? Right. So a mutual friend of ours named Patrick Smith is hosting an event known as the Freedom and Bovinity Festival, which is a benefit or an event where a number of like-minded individuals get together and cook steaks for the homeless. Uh, and it is an absolutely ma magical experience. I was lucky enough to be involved with it last year. Okay. And uh, when he pitched the idea to me that we should get voluntary virtue involved in this, I, I said that that's an amazing idea. Um, this will be a great first opportunity for us to really kind of 
flex our collective muscles, if somebody would say, as far as um, getting even more supplies and materials to help even more people to do even more good, or as one might say, to be more virtuous in our actions. So. All right. I like that. I like that. And, you know, there is so much that I'm watching you do, and I'm kind of just on the edges of this, but I'm watching all of the legal work you're doing to get this formed. And <laughs> I, something I really do like is that I, I am a voluntarist and I, and I spend my time and my mental energy mainly with, with fellow travelers philosophically. However, kind of on the other half of my world, I'm a, I'm a serious small business person. And I, I sit on the board of another 501c3. And I, I know how important it is if you're, if you're not choosing the vagabond, vagabond lifestyle <laughs> to kind of do things right, dot the I's and cross the T's. And I appreciate that you're doing this. And I, so far, what I'm seeing, it looks like this is something that I, I can recommend to my vanilla friends, my uh, mainstream friends, as well as uh, not just voluntarists and libertarian leaning folks. I, I think you're doing a, a, a great job. And I, I guess I guess we're, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, that would be my advice, even though I like you, even though I'm on the board. Uh, this is definitely something that I... I, I I think it would be smart for a person before they dump a ton of money into it, wait until uh, voluntary virtue has existed for a month or two or three and see what's actually happening. Um, you plan to be around for the long term, right? Oh, yeah. Um, this is a project that I, I kind of see this as, as like, what would be the phrasing? It's it's my baby almost at this point. Uh, it was an, It was kind of an idea that was loosely tossed around at one point, and it was just snatched hold of and we haven't let go yet and i have i have no intentions at any point uh there's still so much more we even if everything that we've talked about in this gets down to 100 percent efficiency there's so much more that we can expand on improve on continue to grow help more people this is something that the limit is as far as we're willing to take it essentially I love that. And I'm sure we'll make a bunch of mistakes along the way as, as much oh. as you are planning things out and, and such, you know, there are bound to be errors. But uh, and so is, is this something that I know there have been issues in the past with other libertarian charities um, in which people aren't always thrilled with how things have gone? What are your views on transparency? Uh, like, is this something you're going to be sharing everything or are you do you want input from people? Uh, yes, this is going to be, this is one of, if not our highest priority outside of doing things ethically and, you know, following consistent principles and not violating anybody's rights, which is priority number one. Priority number two after that is maintaining total transparency. That includes financial transparency, operational transparency, transparency on our decision-making processes, um, and we'll also be transparent if there are any things that we're not transparent about. Uh, and that may seem kind of paradoxical, but at least we'll tell you what we won't tell you. And uh, I think these things are important to building trust, especially like we said. Uh, I have a lot of respect for people who can't you know, give massive donations, which I think a lot of nonprofits target very hard, but want to give $20, $25 a month. And those are people that you do have to build a trusting relationship with. You can't just take the money and run like some organizations might do. Uh, and I think that that is, like I said, priority number two, as far as the, the highest thing that isn't morally necessary for me to keep existing, essentially. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, speaking of the, the philosophy, the morality, uh, it, this charity is focused on benefiting people who do adhere to the NAP. Is that roughly the, the idea or tell me a bit more about that? Right. So charitable contributions will not be going to people who are actively engaged in the violation of other people's rights or course of violence. Uh, and this might be a bitter pill for some people to swallow, but as we said, in the beginning of all of this, and if you couldn't tell by the composition of the group, as you, I'm sure, are beginning to learn as more of these types of videos come out, um, we are not only a nonprofit organization, but we are, in a sense, also an advocacy group because we have a kind of unified vision of how we would like to all peacefully live our lives. Uh, and there are certainly circumstances where people who may be tangentially or in some 
passive manner influenced by or associated with coercive violence that we may consider. However, individuals who are in these instances, especially by or because of their involvement in coercive violence or the violation of other people's rights will be ineligible for receipt of charitable giving, which I believe is a very fair uh, line to draw. Yeah, and I think that's something that that the board is finding a good balance uh, with is there are certain things that are just plain old nice. Even if you're kind of a bad guy and you do something nice, you kind of want to support that nice thing, not the person, but the nice thing. But there are so many charities out there in the world, tens of thousands, millions between churches and 501c3s and other political jurisdictions, versions of 501c3s that you do kind of have to pick your niche. And I love that ours is good folks being nice to each other and helping each other out. That's, that's kind of a nice niche to fill. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, you know, I, I don't I don't think it's too much to ask. And I certainly don't expect the overwhelming majority of people who wish to seek out our charitable services to uh, fall under that category. I, I right. don't I don't see that being a massive issue. I don't see us getting, wow, the only people who want our charitable services are people who violate others' rights. <laughs> right. A bunch um, of IRS agents wanting new laptops <laughs> so that they can audit better. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but we will make sure that as part of our designing philosophy, we're setting up every barrier and boundary possible to make sure that we do not waste a single dollar where it doesn't need to go. Uh, and they will be allotted by people who understand the principles, who understand what voluntary virtue is about, who want to do good in the world. And to me, that that's a recipe for success if I've ever heard of one. Well, that sounds like a, a great place to uh, pause our conversation. I'm sure we'll chat again. Um, yes. By the way, I've, I've got the website up here uh, on the overlay. And on the website, there's a place to donate. There's a place to ask. Uh, there's the grant process. Uh, if you need help or know someone that needs help, there's a description there on how to do that. There's a contact uh, button, of course, in case you want to give us any ideas or offer help. If you can't offer uh, money, if you want to offer your uh, your skills, your time. Uh, I'm sure Christian would be interested in, in hearing about that. Um, thank you so much, Christian, for coming on today and uh, look forward to helping lots of folks in the future. Yeah, it'll be great. I'm super happy to have you a part of this team.